And a huge welcome to the Bar Stewards Inquiry Craven Meeting Special. We're all very excited to get this one underway. John Lang is, is joining me this evening. Good evening, John. Slug in hand, poised. Absolutely. And uh, last and definitely not least, it's the Naps King, Quentin Franks. Good evening, Quentin. Evening, Lee. Yeah. And after, after that uh, uh, rubbish action at the weekend, we're glad that's all done with now. The uh, the Grand National and the twig hopping. Um, there's not really much excuse to look at jumps anymore now. Um, so <laughs> we get on with the one of the premier flat cards of the, of the year, the, 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 the preps to the guineas. I always look forward to this one on Newbury on Saturday coming up. And uh, we've got an action-packed show for you because we've got our three best bets each. And also, uh, we'll be going through some of the, the main races on the Tuesday and Wednesday and uh, any other business of interest for you. So before I get on to the, the, the best three bets, uh, just 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 point out a few uh, interesting things I've noticed, noted for the meeting. Michael Prosser was a, was a heavy waterer last year, particularly on the July course in summer. However, he's not, not been that heavy so far on the Rowley. And... Um, eight millimeters was applied last Friday. Um, current going stick as of this morning was 7.1, which is on the quick side. Let me tell you, once you, once you start getting to, to get into 7.3, 7.4, that's where we're, we're, you know, we're really at good to firm standards. So it won't take a lot more and it, we've got drying weather, 20 degrees, so we could be looking at sort of good, good to firm tomorrow. That's how I expect it to ride. And I can expect Prosser to put plenty on on Tuesday night with the 20 degree temperatures again on Wednesday, um, you know, to make sure it maintains. That's Prosser's history. That's what he does. I can see him putting six mils or some or five or six mils on um, overnight um, to try and maintain at the very least. Um, so that's where we're at with the, with the water. In the weather is promising on tuesday to be a southerly wind not really that strong but it'll be a, it'll be a breeze and that comes across them towards the stands so possibly you might want to be nearer the stand side but that's that's a bit more guesswork and i'm not particularly um going mad about that a couple more stats trainers that do particularly well at this meeting are hannon the cannon in non-handicap races um he has a lot a lot tuned up for this meeting in maidens condition races and obviously the stakes races 15 percent at this meeting which is very competitive given given what you're racing against and uh, hannon wouldn't be 15 percent on a season i don't think on the flat so 15 percent hannon is worth looking at anything that you like of his and appleby obviously a ridiculous 26 percent um at this meeting and um he's, he's a man for the fabs any fabs seems to just uh, rock and roll and uh, get you get you well in clover. So, again, they're two trainers to look out for, a little bit obvious. So, without further ado, then, we'll come on to our, our best of the week. And I'm excited for mine, and I hope John and Quentin are as excited for theirs. John, I'm coming to you for your third best bet, please. I'm not as excited as I was yesterday when I had five amazing. <laughs> um, but, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll rock on. Yeah. Um, the third best is in the three o'clock on Thursday, and this is John Gosden's Rainbow Fire. Um, still an entire, and despite he, he's obviously had physical issues, he's been kept in training by all the horse fans. I hate so ill. He kept yeah, on really yeah. well on his return at Kempton under a penalty for the first time in his life. He's got the benefit of Rab not being on and Frankie being up. <laughs> I, think he's, I think he's got to be better than an anti horse, or he'd uh, been a long time gone from the court then. Um, <laughs> and plan for this lad would be to noddle up here and then head for the Hunt Cup. So I think he's pretty solid on Thursday in the three o'clock. Yeah, it does look it does look attractive off ninety, uh, but obviously an horse that's had, that's had problems, um, and obviously like you say, Frankie up for the first time. Mm, interesting shout for old Sides of Hale. Uh, he'll not be having many for Stout now, John. Over to Gosden's, over to the Coop then yeah. uh, for Sir Hale. Um, good stuff, mate. Um, we haven't got any prices on that, obviously, at the moment, but um, we'll put John down at the opening price when it when it comes out for, for, for betting records. Uh, Quentin, I'll come to you for your third best of the meet, please. My third best meeting of the, well, the Craven meeting comes in the 410 on Tuesday. Uh, it's a Phillies novice. And I'm going to have the once raced irresistible on side at a, a large enough price. 
she she didn't really show much on debut. She was green very slowly away um, on the back foot and then got got checked about a furlong, furlong and a half from the finish line. Uh, was eased off to, on that day and she was just too green to ju- show herself to, to best effect. Um, in the paddock beforehand, she really took the eye. Um, her coat was woolly. She was carrying condition. Um, she's a really a three-year-old on looks. I expect a winter on her back would have done her the world of good. But at the top of the market, you've got the Crenel. Um, the, the all-weather form that she showed was poor. For, for all, she was much the best on the day. Pointing had to run the race at Newcastle, and that thanks Monica's form's not not particularly great. Um, I, as I said, I expect her done well from from two to three. She's she's twenty two to one, and that's where my one point is going. Cracking shout for the shirt, and uh, and Tom Tom Doyle uh, on board. Um, we all know where's the trousers in that relationship. Never mind this. Holly's changed the surname to Marquand. It, we know it, it's Tom Doyle, not Tom Marquand. We know irresistible for Quentin for the uh, and I, it, it's, it's going to be definitely one point win Quentin. I'm just checking. Yeah, one point win, one point win. Yeah, and none of this each way nonsense, of course. Um, so twenty two, nice price, irresistible. They're going the four ten tomorrow in the maiden at Newmarket. Nice choice, Quentin. Love the big price. Um, my third best bet all goes also goes tomorrow. Um, goes in the um, um, the Earl of Sefton. Um, and I think there's a little bit, little, little bit of value to be had here. Um, on uh, Jane Chapel Hyams catch 22, um, 12 to 1 is available at the moment. I think that's too big. I think a little bit of prejudice going on there. If you look on international ratings, catch 22 is only a pound behind the uh, six to five favourite master of the seas. Uh, my new market model tells me that catch 22 is working to a very high standard. And knowing Jane's horses, like J- Jane always has them in the peak of condition. And what's interesting is uh, one, of, one of the owners of this um, uh, likes to send them abroad. And the, the initial plan with Catch-22 was to go to Dubai. But there was a there was apparently a delay with the papers or they got stuck somewhere in Mauritius while they were transporting. Um, and it, it, it was too late to, to be admitted to Dubai. So the, the plan B is to come here. Now, if they thought they were good enough to run in the you know, the, the carnival races at Dubai. I'm sure there'll be a few long faces on that syndicate um, if they're not able, you know, to be competitive at Group 3 level um, over, over here. Obviously, we know that South African Group 1 standard is not British Group 1 standard. You've got Master of the Seas, uh, trained by Charlie Appleby, who obviously been gelded very, very hard puller last season, destroyed his chances in many races by pulling so hard. So I found that that an interesting runner. But at six to five, do I really want to see that pulling its its nuts off? Um, you know, in fourth or fifth at that sort of price, not at all. Obviously, Master of the Seas, if he if he fulfilled that initial potential that we we knew he had uh, after winning. Um, uh, was it was it last year's last year's Craven uh, beating La Barossa and 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 doing everything wrong to boot? Obviously, that sort of level is going to make him tough in here. But but still, I think the South Africa and I really rate Jane Chapelheim. I think she's a tremendous trainer, and uh, I'm all over Catch Twenty Two. A very generous, I think, twelve to one. When you've got horses like Brunch, similarly similarly priced. I don't get that at all. I think Catch-22 will prove a lot better than horses like Brunch and possibly Bell. Bell Rock's only rated 106 and he's four points less in the betting. So Catch-22 for me for a one-point win. Quentin, I'll dive straight back to you for your second best. Uh, it comes in the free handicap tomorrow. Um, 14.25, that is. Uh, Tarek at Bay is the horse in question. The price has kind of made the way throughout the day, sadly. Uh, he probably would be the best bet in the card. Um, but there's still enough juice in an either for an offer. Yeah. He did too much on very testing ground in the Horace Hill last year. Trained the freeze on in the run and was, was ran down late. Both starts have come on soft and heavy ground, but the way he moves, I actually think just decent, good, good to firm ground is going to suit him better uh, and bring about improvement. It doesn't look a strong race, does it? To be honest, you've got the kind of free going new science. Um, who I've got concerns about. He showed little off the bridle work in Maidan. Um, Harrogate Bay is likely to get a solo on the front end with uh, Brian Moore up. Um, you know, front end at HQ is no bad thing. 
Um, I made him favourite. I didn't really like much in the race. Honey Sweet meets Soft Brown. Power of Beauty is a big sweaty thing. Uh, Ruby, I know you were keen on last season. And then I've mentioned Ryan Moore did a sting for it, uh, Donny. Um, but I made Tarek a Bay favourite, 9 to 4. He's still about, hopefully it's still about in the morning to have a, a play at the odds. Well, I'm going to give you better than that because I can see some five to two. Um, oh, so, so, so five to two for your for your two pointer. Um, I'll come on to this race when we go previewing, but I agree with a lot of your sentiments, Quentin. So, um, we'll we'll talk about that in more depth um, later in the show. The free handicap. Um, I'll before going to John's two points. Um, I'll nip in uh, with mine. Um, the Wednesday race, uh, the, the the big one, the the Craven. I thought it'd be nice to, to go for a bet in this, and obviously my Jane Chapel high and bias is coming through yet again. Um, Native Trail, obviously an extremely warm order at five to two on, and on on figures and numbers and everything we've seen, absolutely no problem with making the horse that price. I do feel though that that, that Charlie Appleby. Uh, will not have native trail at 100%. I think it'll be coming here at 90%. Um, that's probably still good enough. But again, when we're taking two to five, do we really want to be, um, you know, backing horses that aren't absolutely um, um, 100% on their metal? So I I looked at a market here that will evolve. There's only one firm um, pricing it up at the moment, but it's without the favourite market. And um, that's bet three six five. So I, I thought um, uh, Claymore without without um, Native Trail at one hundred to thirty. I thought that was excellent value because um, another story. But I mean, this only cost ten k, which is incredible. What 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 a piece of business this is at ten thousand. Um, the, the the owner from Bahrain got some massive massive offers in the winter, enormous. So much so that he obviously he was going to accept. Until Jane Chaplin was so desperate to keep the horse because she thinks he's definitely Group One, um, she convinced that the owner of Bury Roads, the, the lodge, obviously the training place, Bury Road, um, Mary Slack from South Africa, she's bought the horse and kept it there. So I think that's really significant that that Jane Chaplin, obviously, is your landlord. <laughs> you don't want to piss off your landlord. So, so I mean, it's it's. You know, eleven to one straight win. Now, if it had been an each way race, I'd have been, I'd have been pounding the, the each way bet. I think um, you might want a little bit on in the win as well, just in case Native Trail isn't at peak. But you couldn't be more impressed with this last back end. And um, I, I think, I think Claymore is a is a real live uh, contender for this as a price. So that's my second best. Two points without in the without market, under to thirty. But you might get better than that. Who knows when when the other firms start to price up nearer the time. John, your second best. I'm in the four forty five on Wednesday, and this is Andrew Baldin's Nassim. Um, he's only gone up three pounds for a snug win at Southern latest. The runner ups won since. Um, I'm not sure what was on from that. Balding gets his arses peaking down there, so I think this one's going to be pretty much as good now as it will be all season. Um, he's made all to win a race last year, so he can be ridden handy. And he's a fair stare at this trip, so I, I think he's odds on to get the required ride. Um, also, he's, if, if the rain did come, I don't think he'd mind any cut in the ground either, or if... Uh, Lado over waters tomorrow night, which I have actually taken into account. I rather a fair look at his action, and I think if it, even if it's a bit loose on top, I think he'd be okay. So I'm uh, I'm quite sweet on him. So Nassim, that's the Andrew Bowling runner in the mile handicap uh, tomorrow. Uh, that, is that Wednesday, John? Yeah. I'm just look, look, yeah, looking at my calendar. Yeah, Wednesday. Got that. Did win last time, like you said. Form's pretty pretty good at the level. Fifteen to two, John. You happy with that? Perfect, yeah. Are we on in the win of the each way? Straight win. Straight win. Bear in mind, this comes to the naps table. We've got it, we've got it. We, yep, yep, good stuff. Right, 15 to 2 for John. Two points on the nose. I'll come to you, John, finally for um, your best bet. Me may as well leave you on, get you on first. Your best bet, John, for the uh, for the Craver meeting. Okay, do. Well, listeners from the five to follow will not be surprised that this is in the 335 on Thursday. <laughs> and this is Roger Varian's Eden. Um, 
I mean, I said quite a bit about him in the fact to follow. I mean, he's an almost faultless specimen, own bred by Prince Basil, made by Frankel. This one to me showed tremendous promise on debut and then copped a bad ride when he was up five at Newcastle. But it's interesting to note in today's uh, stable tower in the post, Roger Varian's putting that down to trainer error. Um, and I'm absolutely delighted he's running in this because, yeah, I mean, you can bear this out there. When he got beat in the maiden, I said, this is just the type to pop up in the field, and didn't I? You did. You did. And, um, the fact that he's, he's coming here means Roger Varian's sticking to the programme <laughs> well, <laughs> quite nicely. Um, and I think this trip will be absolutely perfect at the minute. Yeah. No, no, I, I get you. I get you. And you I get your confidence, and I, I get the trainer's confidence as well. But I mean, especially the fact that they're, they're probably going to, if they'd have wanted, they could have said one of made and end up mid eighties in a handicap. Well, um, I mean, he's spunking fifteen pounds worth of handicap, Mark. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's an interesting call. So, Aidan, John, are you? What? 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 What are you going to be doing yourself? Are you looking for like an each way angle? Or a, or, or a win angle, because um, I would imagine you'll have eight, eight runners, I would think, I hope, anyway. I'm hoping for, I'm hoping for the eight for the each-way player, yeah. Okay, what we'll do is then we'll put you, we'll do you 1.5 each way if there's eight or more. If yeah. it's if it's seven, well, you know, like or six, we'll, we'll, we'll go win only. Yeah, I'm perfectly happy with that. Okay, no, it's yeah, just for clarification for, for Billy Bunters. Um, okay. Uh, we'll leave uh, the best to last, Quentin's to last. So my uh, three-pointer um, goes on the Wednesday um, and the, in the in the 150 race. It's the sprint handicap. And I have absolutely maximum confidence in this. I, I, I cannot tell you how confident I am. I think it's also a win uh, doing hand springs. Pocket the profit of George Bowie's uh, Ryan Moore in the saddle. I, I, as soon as I watch this win at Ponty, uh, on reappearance, I, the the immediate the immediate aftermath of that, I thought, well, this is po- probably going to end up stakes or by the as, 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 you know the profile of this is, is just amazing, really, how it's come from sort of like rated fifty four, and now it's absolutely bolted in um, off seventy nine. It comes there with the penalty on Wednesday off eighty five. I'm confident on the time it clocked at Ponty that day that this season at some point it will get to three figures, no problem. And 85 tomorrow against some probably rusty rivals. Um, you could say on Wednesday that I'm, I'm very confident that the pocket, the profit uh, will progress and um, land that sprint uh, from stall 12, which, like I said, I, I do think if that suddenly wind keeps on, I, I do pre- prefer high if the wind's coming from the south, which is across them on the track. So everything uh, tick for pocket the profit. Um, I think he'll be a better horse on turf than the all-weather. He's by Mason out of an acclamation mare. Now both sides of the pedigree say turf over all-weather. So it's, I don't think it's any coincidence um, that that on turf he's already he's already three from six he's two from four and all weather but i just think he looks better on turf the last two starts albeit with a bit of cut in the ground he was impressive at yarmouth missing the break and then equally impressive at ponty on reappearance quentin coming to you for your best pocket the profit is nine to two by the way for punters my best what? bet again comes day one um at least we'll know what the ground's like and watering situations etc and I'm going to put up the, the sh- lucky last, the 4.45. Um, he's got a pedigree that suggests stamina is going to be his forte, and he was winning over a mile last season, uh, Haydock at the back end. Uh, he was just pulling out more all the way to the line, um, cheap pieces off this time, but that's no issue for me. The time he clocked at uh, Haydock was, was fair, and he's got 85 here. They're stuck in the Dantes, in the Derby as well. That, He's not up to that level, but he's definitely better than 85. I've got reservations about a fair few of these in the field. Um, again, like I said earlier, front running ride, new market will be no bother. I suspect that's the way they'll go with uh, Kieran Fallon on board. Uh, my main chunk short to 11 or 4 on offer. Uh, I'm pretty sure he'll progress with racing and end up being three figures. Right. So that's, edu- did you say educator for 45 new market? That's correct. 
That's the one. Uh, that's by Deep Impact out of a Jabawi mare. Uh, uh, I think uh, Tom Tom Doyle's in the saddle. Um, <laughs> Um, not 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 four. Fallon. I think I think there's been a jockey switch. That's why I was I was confirming that it was definitely that you were on about. That's what threw me. Um, but yeah, ed- educator. I can remember Quentin. Um, last September, I had one of my biggest biggest bets <laughs> for ages. For me, it was a a good victory, and I think, like you say, it's got to improve um, as they step up in trip. And yeah, I, I like the selection. So that's eleven to four for your three points. Yes. Yep, yep. He did, um, like, well, I think we spoke about the Goodwood race when he, when he did too much in front there with the Prescott horse and saw that horse off and ended up yeah. getting stopped. And he's, just, he's got a lot more in the locker. He's got 85 here. Time is paid off strong. Yeah, I like him a lot. Yes, he, sh- he should have He should have won that. He was very unlucky not to have won that Goodwood race the time before because, like we said, Seeking um, pressed him like literally all the way and obviously seeking came out and won his novice impressively and that's got a rating of 83 and he's better than seeking so he's off 85 so i think that's a very strong nap quentin so that's good good stuff for our punters we've looked after you this week i think um we've got some great naps there some really strong bets all confident as well so an exciting craven meeting beckons for us hopefully right chaps um we'll come on to some of the races at the Craven meeting and we'll start um, tomorrow um, where, as I said, I mentioned about the going, it's probably going to ride on the quick side. If the forecast showers don't materialize tomorrow morning, there's only about a 40% chance of that. So we don't know whether the showers will come or not. Um, the first race is a five furlong Phillies maiden, uh, unraced horses. I take it. We've got no view here. No, no, Quentin? Oh, it's one, one, one for me to look at them in the pad again. Yeah, exactly. It's a learning race. Uh, can't definitely can't see anything um, to give to punters on, unless I've got I've had no information anyway. So so we're, we're completely uh, blind into that. The one fifty is the Weatherby's uh, Bloodstock Pro handicap, sprint handicap, and uh, a couple in a couple of interesting ones for me going forwards this year are Chipstead and Roger Teals, obviously brother to Oxted. And, um, you know, I, I thought it was very progressive last back end. Roger Teal is a master at getting them to keep keep improving, keeping them sweet. It just makes me worry first time back. You know, I wouldn't be desperate to support him first time back. Rogers can need a run. And the other one was Ra T in the race of Julie Camachos. Um, I think I think that that is a, is, is a, is a progressive type last year. Um, needs the ground on top for me. I don't like to see it on softer ground. I think that was a reason for some of its blowouts last year. Other than that, it's ran really consistent all year, and I thought Rati had probably run well. Uh, anything for it in that for you guys? I wasn't keen on the race to be honest. No, it's tricky. It's an early season sprint mm-hmm. handicap, so I get where you're coming from, John. Quentin. Uh, I thought long-term one that was interesting would be Punchbowl Flyer. Tomorrow's not his ground. He's had a wind knock. When the blink puts the back on on soft ground, it'll be, it'll be of interest. Uh, the one in terms of tomorrow, possibly beyond equal. He's got decent bits of new market form. And uh, Stuart Kittel's go well first up. He yes, won did. well, did well to win at Kempton previously. And uh, yeah, he was one that caught the eye at, I think, 16, 18 to one, something like that. Good stuff. Good stuff, Quentin. Um, so two twenty-five, the free handicap. Uh, Quentin's already tipped tipped one up here in his best bets, uh, Takari Bay, and um, I like his reasoning because I, I, I like him. Thought that the ground was probably wrong for the horses, soft ground twice. Didn't look to move to me like he wanted soft ground on either occasion. Um, so I don't think the faster ground will be a hindrance. I see there's been a lot of money for him overnight, um, which is a pain, but nevertheless. Um, I do think that the horse has got outstanding claims in this. Ribeye, who I did like last season, when he came here, he, act- he actually um, bolted to purse and had to be withdrawn for the for his last intended star here. So whether it's the new market um, uh, air or whether it's, you know, he just wants to get away from Marcus Trigg on him. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> Either or. So Ribeye for me... I think as potential, but I'm just a bit worried where it might be going temper, temperament wise. Dark Angel as well, probably some people's not the favourite sire. So I'm with Quentin. Uh, John, thoughts? I'm sorry, I can't add much to what you've said because I, I was all over Tucker in Bay myself. 
I think he's the least exposed with a better rating with, than most of them, and I think he'll improve for the ground. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, yeah, I've, I've, I think he'll win that. Yeah, it's a shame. Like I said, it, seven to two initially, he was put in at, and um, the vultures have been in. And, I mean, um, he had the arse in the Craven. Now, I, I was interested in what price he was going to be in the Craven because of the Hannon record as well. I thought, well, if he's a ridiculous price in the Craven, I'd, I'd have maybe ever play each way. Yeah, lot, lot, lot of Hannon and the Cannon's horses are really, really trained for this meeting. Yeah. It, um, so, like you said, plenty, plenty of positives there for Quentin's bet. Uh, if, uh, if 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 you if you fancy a play, listeners, on that one, um, three o'clock, I'll sit this one out. Obviously, tipped up, Jane's. Uh, you two, any thoughts on the Earl of Sefton? That's a, a lay of master of the sea for me, to be honest. He's a free guy. They've taken the hood off. Knackers are off, admittedly, but can you punt him in this field at six to five? Yeah, no, not at all. Like. Um, Small field scenario again, lack of pace, just screens, yeah, Buick's arms being pulled out for three furlongs and then him kind of fading out of contention, then dropping him back to a mile in the Queen Anne or something. Um, yeah, lay for me if I get him in the book sub 11 to 8, something like that, I'll be more than happy. Yeah, John, John, your sentiments on this? Yeah, I felt nice to the seas. I mean, his one standout run was in a mentally run guineas, really. Um, that got him off the bit. Um, the rest of the time, I think his form maybe isn't inferior to McGallan, but certainly not the disparity between them that the betting suggests. And I think if it was a match bet, I'd probably back the Gosdenars to beat him. Yeah. I think the extra furlongs uh, a worry for me. Um you know, given it, given how keen he is, uh, I think yeah. I think that is that is definitely an issue. And you, you look at his pedigree as well. Just for, think, well, is it stamina laid? And have we got lots of, you know? And there's nothing there really that suggests, you know, anything further than this would be any use to him. So the fact he is free going, um, the extra furlong I think could find him out. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So all in agreement again. Um, this is this is good stuff. Uh, we're all quite strong, so we can all plow in and. With confidence tomorrow. Uh, 335, the Nell Gwyn. I, I found this really tricky, chaps. Um, what did uh, what what did you two feel? I, I like Kasia really. I think she was consistent last year. Um she got decent form, probably better so into this seven than the male she finished the season over last year. Um there's a lot of much of a muchness running in this. I think she's just about shared in them. I thought, hello, you'll look the type that might not train on. It'll be interesting if she settles early on and how she is to post. But it wouldn't be a betting medium for me. I'd, I'd despise Philly's running at this sort of trip, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Quentin? I was, I was with both of you guys. As a part of the top two, three in the betting, it looks it looks a weak race, doesn't it? The, the rest are much of a muchness, but just a horrible one that screen don't get involved in. Um, See there's a bit of money from Ribbon Rose. I didn't particularly like that at all. Uh, maybe a small place lay on that nearly off if if the money's sustained. It hasn't really done anything on the clock today to warrant it being single figures in this sort of field. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I was sort of impressed with both wins, but just agreeing with you there that, and I was thinking, I, I was actually thinking to myself, if she's sort of thirty-three to one. You know, I might give her a real good mention because I'm thinking, well, you know, some of these might just need it, and where she probably won't. And 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 I'm I, I logged on to see the prices, and 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 ten to one is absolutely ridiculous for a for a filly that's that's rated what uh, twenty eight pounds inferior to John's uh, fancy cash here. <laughs> you know, why? You know, I mean, I I agree. Phillies can improve rapidly, and and I could imagine Ribbon Rose improving a little bit on the eighty one, maybe into, all right, as I'll stretch it mid nineties perhaps. But then that's not going to be anywhere near good enough, you'd think, to to trouble the judge. But uh, weird sort of betting. Um, anything else on the Tuesday that uh, that we've that, that we've not touched on? Uh, any obviously, a Quentin's tips educator, uh, John. Uh, did you go against something on Tuesday? Oh no, it's Quentin. Quentin again, ir- irresistible twenty twos in the four ten, going against uh, uh, Crinello seven to four. Uh, anything else on the Tuesday, chaps? No. 
No, right, straight on to Wednesday then. Without further ado, uh, we don't mess about. It starts off um, with uh, another maiden on ITV4, strangely enough. Weird that the Fielding's not on telly on Thursday. Um, and yet they're showing me. Oh, John, what would you would you have probably put the field in on the on the on the Wednesday or something, or rather than the Thursday? If, I find it strange that they're putting like maidens on on TV rather than something like the field. Yeah, I mean, the th- the thing is, of course, some of these maidens can be frightfully instructive, can't they? At this time of year. Um, yes. And I think on. The Wednesday, um, I think the 115 could actually be quite instructive because I think there's one of Roger Varian's in there that could put herself forward as maybe the coronation stakes, really, uh, a mainer. Um, I saw this one run first time up last year um, at Newmarket, where, funnily enough, she was second to Ribbon Rose. Um, yeah. And my mark for the notes said, Ardale take for something like the Geoffrey Barling at the Craven meeting. Well, this is the old Geoffrey Barling maiden. Um, so again, I, I don't know whether Varian's got my computer hat, but he, he, he seems to be sending us is exactly where <laughs> I want him to send them at the minute. Yeah. Um, and I, th- I think if she's anything like a, a decent price, which I would suggest four to one or better. I'd, I'll be having a fair old play on this one because I think she's useful. Hmm. Interesting shout. Um. I don't. Looking at the race, I don't think you might probably not get four to one, depending on depending on how how the newcomers are fancied. But I think it, I think it's certainly going to be a favourite. Mm-hmm. I mean, on 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 the on the debut anyway. Uh, Quentin, anything in this? Uh, yeah, Amania, Amania was the one that caught the eye physically better from two to three. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't really look a deep race, to be honest. I mean, you've got a Roger Charlton newcomer, me and newcomers. Um, Tagus is, is related to Sacred, that one first time out. You've got the Egg Walker thing's an absolute pig of a horse she is. Um, although the last pig of a horse that we talked about on the podcast has gone on one tour and about, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Maine is the one to beat in that. It's, it's strange they put it on on TV though, as you're saying. I've, look, the Fieldings are better a better place to put on TV. Yeah, on yeah. the Thursday, definitely. Yeah, strange one. Anyway, that's about all we can say on that. One fifty. It's another sprint handicap this time for the three year olds. Uh, a few progressive ones in here, but I'll sit this one out. Having already tipped, um, John Quentin. Anyone wanna anyone see anything in this they like going forward? Yeah, yeah, the three and a half length winner of this, and they've took it out, so I won't, I won't comment further. I'll just, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll wait to this one running and then, then tip it up. So let's... there you go. So this is why you can't miss podcasts. John's, on, John's got one that that, uh, that we're going to bolt up here. So uh, obviously pulled it out. No good for John Quentin. Uh, it's not a strong race. I have just got pocket the pocket broke the clock at point of break, didn't it? I've yeah. got ground doubts though. The way he moves and yeah. it's by Mason, it screams. There's no doubt it's in. It's absolutely lobbed in this thing. And what what do you think it will be rated tomorrow? It's going up 10, 12 maybe. So it's going to be 91 ish. Um, yes. I've just got ground doubts in the back of my head that ground course doubts. Um, there wasn't yeah. much I liked in the race, but pocket the profit. The ground out was in there. It was in there somewhere, and that just put me off. Um, yeah. For, for no. So I, well. I, yeah. I, I think you're right. I think I think there's one thing that that could be to it could be ground. Um, having, I mean, I, I'm not going to count the 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 handicapping runs because obviously it it wasn't there to do its best. But um, I do concede that obviously all its turf form is with cut, and um, like you say, the action suggests that cut's fine and. Um, that that could find it out. I was just that impressed. It'd be interesting if if they scratch. If they scratch, then obviously you were right. Um, because I've I've got a feeling if they run, I don't think they're too bothered because because it's like well, they might not be bothered anyway. But why would you risk a potentially good horse? Um, you know if 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 ground were you know really against it. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But I, I do take that on board. Um, two twenty five. The Wood Ditton. Everyone loves the winner of the Wood Ditton, John. Yeah, the people that. 
love them the most are the ones that buy them to run in Navi Saddles at Plumpton in October. <laughs> um, you, you always get a mixed bag in this, don't you? You know, you get some that's sort of listed class up the front end all the way, and then you you, you look at some of these other fat cheese eating monkeys that's chuffing along at the back. And you just wait for the Jelly Dale mob to step in, stick cheek pieces and blinkers on and send them whizzing round Plumpton. Um it's always an interesting race to watch, isn't it? It is. I mean I mean Mucka Dram won this. Um he obviously ended up being hundred and twenty two. Like you say, you've had a variety of horses that have uh, have taken this and of have, have varying standards. Um, re- some real, real bad ones and some real good ones, good ones. But Mucker Dram's probably the pick of them, I would say. Uh, off 122, well, you, you'd have to be the pick of them, wouldn't you? That was back in 2012. Um, UAE Jewel, um, in 2019 wasn't bad, that ended up triple figures. But yeah, you, John, you're right, you get a mixed bag in this, you don't know what you're gonna get. Um, uh, Forrest Gump said that so something like that. Anyway, anyway, I've got something to add in this. Um, I, I will look at the entry stage, and particularly for one horse because I'm waiting for it to run, and it's a horse called um, Ruling uh, Dynasty. It's trained by Charlie Appleby, and they think it's absolutely top class. And um, but again, they've pulled it out, and I'm just wondering <laughs> if that could be because it might be a bit quick for it. It's a half brother to Olden Times. Um, and they, they, they think a lot about it. Um, so uh, ruling dynasty is one to watch for uh, when, when that makes its debut. So I just found it interesting that they're running secret state instead. And I know it's going to be favourite, but I reckon they'll think a bit about this. But again, uh, we go on about ground. Uh, the dam was Jacqueline Quest, um, you know, uh, the, the Emery Cecil train guineas winner. And um, the ground for me with Jacqueline Quest uh, I, I think um, a lot of the progeny that she's produced all want cut, and 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 that that would worry me um, if the ground's riding quick. But secret stay, I reckon, will have probably plenty of ability, um, given that they entered uh, well, they entered three and they, they're running two. So it's yes. extremely rare that they run a boat in this, isn't it? You know. Yeah. Well, it's bred, I mean, look how it's bred. Jabari out of a thousand guineas winner. I mean. You know, it's it's you know it's as good as it's good as you're going to get pedigree wise. Um, it's just whether it's it's whether I, there's ground issues or whether whether it's any good. But like I said, the one I'm waiting to run, ruling dynasty, keeps getting entered. It's been entered about three times now, and and, and they've decided not to run it for whatever reason. I, I want to know why, but um, I have to find that out. But that's the one I'm waiting for. Quentin, any view on the wood ditton? <laughs> I want to watch nine pages on the show, uh, one to watch and, and take the shit ton of notes and, and, and back and next time out. Exactly. There'll be plenty of, plenty of action. Who knows? One might make the Jimmy Lindley uh, going forwards. Who knows? We'll move on to the three o'clock then, the Abenant. I had a bet on Garris last time and was very disappointed, but who knows? It might have been a bit of the draw that got that beat at, um, at, at Doncaster. I did think I did think the lower, you know, the ones towards the far side and the middle at the edge, and the ones down the stand side were doing nothing all day. But I was still a bit disappointed. And like John keeps reminding me, it's Charles Hills for fuck's sake. So, chaps, what can you steer me on in this? <laughs> I, I thought that Ebro Rivers from last year gave him a hell of a chance against these, and I think six to seven will be his trip this year. I think it's an ideal starting point. Um, I think I think CWO Hills is good, could bounce back here from the Donny flop. Wouldn't be the biggest shock just to give punters a kick in the nuts. So did the coin in at Donny. <laughs> um, you know that suits the narrative, doesn't it? So yeah, yeah. I mean, Ebro River for me though. Do you think? Do you think that's a signal of intent from Carlton Palmer to um, to run Ebro River back at six? As if he said, yeah. "This ain't gonna, this ain't gonna get the mile." The Guineas yeah. mile races are a waste of time. He's probably thinking more about Commonwealth Cup. He, he's never gonna make the Native Trail at a mile, is he? You know, no, he's given no. that. You know. No, fair point. Quentin, uh, Jumbies, me. I 
if Gareth wins, I'll be sick. I was on it last time out as well. Uh, but I, I like Jumby and the, the way it cut through the field. Admittedly, it was at seven. I think he's got the gears for six. Um, did very, very well to get himself out of trouble um, back over. Yeah, it was here at the Rowley um, in September. I think there's going to be more progression from him being by New Bay. And uh, yeah, he's the one I, I think it's about six to one. Uh, 11 to two, nine to two. Uh, I think that's fair. Yeah, good stuff. No, it's quite a nice race. Um, but yeah, I'm going to probably sit this one out, but I'll take both of your points on board with, with Ebro River and Jumbe. 335, obviously, the, the the big one. I think I know it's two to five, but I think everyone's looking forward to seeing Native Trail. Uh, obviously, I've made my point in this. Um, chaps, you, you, your two views, please. I'd, I'd like to see Native Trail do it impressively. Um, there's no reason why he shouldn't on the book. Um, I don't think there's anything already on Stable Farm or anything like that. Um, there shouldn't be any excuse, really, should there? No, even at 90%, you'd think that's, that's ample. Um, you'd think you'd only have to be... I don't know, running to round 110 to sort of confidently win this. So if it's rated 122, and that's that's the kind of sort of performance we can expect, then um, it should be it should be straightforward. Stephen, Stephen H. Power will have had the double with the varying favourite in the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not indeed? Um, Quentin, your view on the Craven? Uh. Would rather back native trail for the two thousand guineas now. You know he's going to get cut if he's even semi impressive. Semi impressive. Um, I like your angle into the race. Lee Claymore is impressive. She doesn't really have him wound up at all. Uh, first time out, Jane Chapelheim, but um, deadly pulling clear. You know it's going to get an uncomplicated ride under Kirby. Um, yeah, I, I quite like your angle on the race with backing that without the favourite. Just a, a slight sidetrack. Um, what do you make of Caribus going first up to the Guineas, given his nature? Um, I, 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 yeah, I mean, again, it, it, it's like he is fresh. And whether whether they see that as a positive, though, as in because he is fresh, they, they don't want him to sort of leave his mark. So let's say if they'd have ran Caribus on Saturday or they'd have ran Caribus in this, um, let's say... He, 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 he wastes all that valuable um, testosterone. Um, and I just wonder if that's them thinking, well, it might be, he, he's going to be fresh and free. He's going to be like, Rrr. and maybe that's what they think. That's the best time to get him at the mile fresh. And I, I don't know, but like, we, I think we're all, all of the same opinion that we don't think um, he will get the mile the way he was racing last year. Um, at, at top group one level, are we, have we, are we still of that same opinion, chaps? Very much. So. I, I, I couldn't back him in the guineas unless no. unless it fell apart, really. Um, I'd, um, at this stage, having seen photographic evidence of how Luxembourg's done over the winter, I think I'd pre- even prefer Luxembourg over the mile at Newmarket. Yeah. Before we get into the native trail business, you know. Are, are you, well, are you, are you are you confident in Luxembourg this this summer then, John? I think he's, he he's probably done a shade better than I thought he would. Actually, I thought uh, he looked as though he developed in most of the right areas. He's still a little bit late across the lines, possibly, but he's done well. Hmm. Interesting. No, I like I like, I like your opinions on things like this. Uh, so Luxembourg, anti-post derby backers, um, you might be on good terms with yourselves there, but John's even thinking, do you think Aidan will, will, will chance Luxembourg in Guineas, John? Probably not. Um, again, I'm only going off a photograph, I haven't seen the arse in the flesh, but I think it'd be touch and go whether he'd get there. Mm. Yeah. I mean, what's where, where, do you think, do you think, Aiden would probably go the the home trials, or do you think he'd bring Luxembourg across for the Dante? What what do you reckon? He tends not to travel, and uh, so he, he better derby horses. He tends not to travel them um, so close to the derby. Um, they, they would more often than not go for 
like the Derringstown, wouldn't they? Um, yeah, Lappertstown, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I'd expect to say something like Point Lonsdale in the Dampy. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of second best kind of thing, yeah. Like the same. Like, you know. Yeah, second division to see, see where they're at. Um, yeah, um, so I think I think three of us agree. I think I think probably the best thing to do is 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 back native trail uh, for the Guineas uh, before the race tomorrow because like Quentin makes a good point really that if you if he wins very impressively, it's going to be a very short a lot shorter and you're probably going to get more value out of doing that than actually backing him tomorrow because at least I suppose he could get beat tomorrow. Um, and then you've still got a chance in the Guineas. So, you know, he could have, he could have, he could have excuses tomorrow and get beat, you know. I'd, get ter- I'd, I'd still be a bit surprised, you know, if Apple be ran them both in the Guineas. Well, I, I mean, you, you think, I mean, in the past, when, when they've two good ones, they tend to split them up or, you know, what one might, one might do, one might do French, one might do Ireland, um, and and so on. And, well, well and I, they, I would have thought Native Trail would have done the New Market Curra, and the other one would have been better suited to going around the bend anyway. They got, uh, yeah. I think it's modern, modern news, they're going for the French Derby, uh, French Derby, French Guineas, that's where French Guineas, right. they're trying to, I guess they're throwing two big darts at this, and, He's never won the guineas, has he? Is that no. right? I don't think he has. No, no, yeah, right. Hmm. Oh, right. So yeah, because he training he, hard, has he really? I mean, no, no. not so. It was, well, they, well, it's not long since he got rid of needle man, is it? So, no, no. Um, <laughs> so, that, so there we go. Well, to be fair, the Baron had about forty years in before he won a one thousand, didn't he? So, yeah. Yeah, you, no, that's you true. Can, you can have a long way to win a guinea. Well, yeah, it's, it's not the easiest race in places. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, on Thursday, John's tipped in the in the in the field, and um, obviously he's all over Aiden, Roger Varian's runner. Um, Quentin, did you have a look at? Have you had a chance to look at the field on Thursday? I, had a, I, I like John's angle into it. I think he's going to be underestimated in the market. Yeah, you know, we're coming here on the back of two weather runs. Uh, turned over at what? Nine to four on. Um, I, I think he's really going to be underestimated in the market. There's a few in there. Uh, Star of India goes elsewhere. Zechariah goes elsewhere. There's a horse in there, Sunny Liston, that I really don't like. Um, he was impressive on debut at Sandown uh, was that July. Uh, but I felt he was on the right part of the track that day. Uh, he was green and noisy in the paddock, but he's always sibling is one first time out. I think he's going to be one that was, he won five and a half wickets. I think he's going to be one that takes a chunk out of the market when he doesn't deserve to because time looks modest and the, the form's not worth worth little, to say the least. Um, the, the, the field and Oz, he, he's going to be double figures is the variant thing. Um, he's the one I'll have on side. Yeah, I, 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 I'm I'm with you and John well, uh, on on Aiden. Uh, I think that that is definitely the one that I'd be I'd be backing if if the price is right. Um, just just one other that I thought was worth a mentioning there. Um, we've talked about Hannon the Cannon. Um, you know, having his horses nice and primed. Um, uh, he felt the need to run this in a maiden at the Doncaster meeting, Dawn of Liberation, and uh, I was I was quite impressed. With the effort, actually, I, I thought I thought he really progressed from last year. Um, he's he's got strong form from last year as well, uh, behind the likes of Who Yamal, which go, obviously goes um, in the uh, uh, stronger uh, uh, race at the uh, at the Craven meeting, um, running in the Craven. So I, I just felt two lengths behind that. You know, you're getting into territory of, of, of a serious horse, and I think he has progressed physically as well. So, Dawn of Liberation, I felt um, for Susan Roy, I thought that was possibly one to to put up to Aiden, um, what we all seem to fancy in the field and on Thursday. Right, chaps, to finish the show off, any other business at the meeting that we've not covered? Have we got any other dark gems to look out for? Or not particularly dark, but uh, the confined novice on Wednesday to look it looks like two or well, not a two horse race but a Deus Huxley um broke the clock at Kempton on debut like just a proper galloping performance um these group class um figure was I think time form gave it a 98 the guy I used gave it 101 
it's just a relentless gallop. I genuinely don't think they'll see what way this went. I was hoping that they'll get out the, the Richard Hughes thing, um, hole of the moon that finished second to it. The handicapper gave that 75. They will not see what way that went off of 75. Um, but sadly, uh, uh, have they really? Yeah, they have. All, all of the moon they've given that 75, like you say. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, Darius Huxley, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's group class. Um, I might look at the Dante market to see if there's any prices kicking about for him. Uh, I'm fully expecting to win very impressively. Well, the word was before debut. Um, this was triple figures. Um, this was on, on homework. This was this was a serious. Serious workhorse. Um, we know that when they come to the track, it doesn't always work out like that. But um, it seemed to um, when it when it made its debut at Kempton, and, and like you say, Quentin, a, a, a pretty ridiculous time. You'd say running the mile and a quarter in uh, two minutes and four seconds. Um, uh, when you consider that the next race was the Magnolia, which was a listed contest. And that was only slightly quicker, literally probably a length, length and a half quicker um, than Aldous Huxley. So when yeah. you when you when you consider the way Aldous Huxley won, um, you know, head in chest, um, you're thinking, well, you, you're at least listed class, I would say, because you, you're going to come on. Gosden's usually come on a fair bit for the run, so yeah, it could be a wow factor this one. Mm, good okay. spot. But, might be a short price, but still, it's one of those those that I think you know. Sometimes you're worried about horses defying a penalty, but I think this one, I don't think there's any worry at all. Really, it's, it's a, I think it could be a point and shoot job for Frankie on on the um, on the Wednesday in the four ten. So something to look forward to for banker punters. Could be blogger on that one. Blogger with his with his with his free bets for people on that stallion hanging around. Where is stallion these days, John? Cooked off his tits somewhere, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, uh, we're not going to get to blogger shouting, where's the purse this week, I don't think. Um, you know, when he, he did it with Caribus uh, last back end, but uh, it, it, might make, might, it might make interesting viewing if he's if his big double gets chinned on the line uh, by something um, to, see, to see his face. Everyone likes to see that. Anyway... Um, I think that's it. John, have you anything to, to add to this? Uh, no, that's my lot. No, I'm I'm the same. I've I, I've I've shot my bolt. I've given my all in advance uh, for the meeting. So hopefully uh, there's some good profit for you there. And uh, we're back as normal on Friday with the show for New Brit the weekend, and the uh, gambling review will also uh, be online on Wednesday. So we want to thank you for listening to this, and hopefully we'll do the business myself, John and Quentin for you at the Craven meeting. That's all from us. Bye for now.